Hi everyone! Okay, this is a big moment in 2023 for the Mr. Francie channel, because this is my final reading vlog for 2023. Well, weekly vlog, because it's now a just a weekly vlog, not a reading vlog, but anyway, you get my point. This is my final weekly vlog for 2023, and I don't really know how to react to that. I, I don't know whether to go, yay, or whether to go, oh, it's so sad. But <laughs> it, it just, to me, it is what it is, and I'm guessing that some people may want an explanation, like, why, M Mr. Francy, why from out of nowhere is this your final weekly reading vlog for the year? And the answer, when provided in context, actually makes sense and is quite simple to explain. So, uh, in December, every single year, well, also in June, but also in December, <laughs> I do a series called My Favourites and Non-Favourites. So in June, it is the pathway through the year favourites and non-favourites, mid-year, if you will. And in December, I do my end-of-year favourites and non-favourites for the entirety of the year. I talk, and, and of course, by that, I'm referring to books. So I talk about my favourite books, my favourite series, my least favourite books, my least favourite series, my favourite authors... I do a bookshelf tour. There's many, many things that I do <laughs> uh, with my favourites and non-favourites of the year. And because of this, there is not enough time for me to include my favourites and non-favourite series and reading vlogs. And so because of that, I stop my reading vlogs at some point, or my well, what was called reading vlogs and is now called weekly vlogs, at some point in November. And that is because the favourites and non-favourites of the year is about to begin, and so I just don't have that time. So that's where we're at, everyone. This is the final weekly vlog for 2023. Well, the good news is I normally discuss three books, and in this one I'll be discussing four. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch things up a bit. Uh, usually I uh, the order of my weekly vlogs consists of a life update, then I talk about um, my TV viewing, and then I do my reading section, and I'm going to actually start with the reading section this time, because I find that when I start with my life update, then go on to TV and leave reading to last, it doesn't leave me a lot of time, and I find that I'm rushing towards the end of my uh, reading section just to make sure that I'm fitting everything in. So we're going to start with the reading section now, then we'll move into a life update, and then we'll talk about what I have been watching. Uh, yeah, and of course, at the end of my reading section, I will also discuss what I plan to read for not only next week, but the rest of the month. And if you would like uh, live updates on how I feel about everything that I'm reading outside of my reading vlogs, once they are concluded, and I've talked about all the four books I've read in the past week, then you can go to my Goodreads page, the link to that is in the description, or you can check out my uh, monthly wrap that I'll do uh, in... December for November, and in January for December, where I'll talk about all the books that I read that month in as much detail as I can. All right, that being said, let's jump right into the final weekly vlogs reading section. So as I said, I read four books uh, in this past week, which is just absolutely fantastic. And the first of those books was this book, Holiday Grind by Cleo Coyle. This is book number eight in the Coffee House Mystery series, and I gave this book 4.5 stars. So to the premise of this book, in this one we continue to follow Claire Cosey, who is looking to create some holiday-themed coffees for the Village Brew, having planned a tasting party for all the workers to determine a list of what would be best, no one seems in the Christmas mood. So Claire decides to go and find a friend of hers who plays the role of a travelling Santa. However, when she eventually finds him, what she finds is his dead corpse. A new cop in town doesn't seem to buy her theory that this was just a run-by shooting gone wrong, so Claire sets about to solve the case, wanting to put the real killer behind bars. So to my thoughts, I really enjoyed this one. The Christmas theme was so perfect, and a perfect timing too, considering that Christmas is coming, it's soon. <laughs> and I truly enjoyed learning more and more about the endless possibilities of types of coffee that would be perfect for Christmas. 
I was highly invested in the mystery, uh, because who would kill a Santa? I enjoyed seeing Claire sleuthing again, this time accompanied a lot by one of her co-workers, which was fun. Not to mention the joy Madame gives me any time she is in a scene. The reveal felt a bit rushed for me, and I docked 0.5 stars for that, but on the whole, it was an amazing book, and I gave it 4.5 stars. And I am so looking forward to Coffee House uh, Mystery Series next year. I, you know, a little bit of a spoiler... The Coffee House Mystery Series is going to be on my SAS list next year, and by the time we get to, I believe, to the end of the year, there will be a total of... <laughs> I tried to um, rush this so that it would seem a lot more continuous than it actually is. Okay, here we go. A total of 20 books in the series, I believe. So there you go. If there are 21, then I want to get, um, I want to read the 21st book as well. But if there are only 20 by the end of next year, then I want to get through the entirety of all 20. I love this cozy mystery series and I highly recommend it to anyone who loves coffee because Cleo Coyle, through her protagonist, Claire Cosey, uh, discusses coffee a lot. So if you are someone who loves your coffee and would love to learn more about coffee, this is a great way to go. This series, this cozy series, is described as a grittier type of cozy mystery series. What that means is that the lines are a bit blurred when it comes to what may or may not be deemed acceptable to be in a cozy, generally speaking, but it works for me. So if you're up for a grittier type of cozy, and I said cozy, as in Claire Cozy. If you're up for a grittier type of cozy mystery and you want to learn more about coffee and enjoy a coffee house edition of a cozy mystery series, I highly, highly, highly recommend this series. 4.5 stars for The Holiday Grind. The next book that I picked up was this book, The Distance Between Us, by Casey West. This is a YA male-female romance, and the first YA I've read in a little while, but anyway. And I gave this one also 4.5 stars. Okay, so uh, I have read four Casey West books so far. All of Casey West books, as far as I know, are YA male-female romances, and you know, they all received different ratings. Some of them I absolutely loved, some I thought were okay, and I at some stage had an unofficial goal to read as many Casey Wests as I could, and I did not regret reading this one for a moment. I loved this book. So let's talk about the premise. So in this book we follow Cayman, who is a teenager that works with her mother in their doll store. Cayman is not rich, but doesn't mind that at all. After all, she's happy, has a great friend, and has always graduated in sarcasm. One day, a regular customer comes into the store to advise Cayman that her grandson, Alexander, will be picking up her special order doll. Not too much later, Alexander arrives, and Cayman's world is turned upside down. Her father, who is rich, left her mother, and since then her mother believes the rich and the poor do not mix. But Cayman is falling for Alexander. Does she make the logical choice to break it off, or does she follow her heart's desire? So to my thoughts, this was a fantastic book. The ending let me down, but we'll discuss that in a moment. To be honest, I'd call this more a romantic contemporary, as there were definitely contemporary elements to the book. That said... This was such a fun, easy, enjoyable read. Cayman reminds me a lot of Bay Kenish from Switched at Birth. Alexander is the sweetest, kindest, rich boy I've ever come across in literature. Their romance is adorably sweet. Watching Cayman with Alexander uh, and with her friends, or even working in her mother's store, was an absolute delight. Towards the end, we get a reveal of sorts. This was interesting also. Uh, now for my one con. The ending was very sudden. Cayman and Alexander walk into a room to chat with someone, and the book ends before they do. It really pulled me out of the world so fast that my head spun. I just wish that West had added two more chapters to the book so that it felt more complete than it did. I'm only deducting 0.5 stars for that abrupt ending, though, because everything else was perfect. Truly one of my absolute fave Casey West books I've read, and I gave it. 4.5 stars. So next up, we have Death of a Blueberry Tart by Lee and Hollis. This is book number 12 in the Hayley Powell Food and Cocktail Mystery Series. 
I had a goal this year to get through the first 13 books in this series, and completing this one means I only have one left, which is uh, Death of a Wicked Witch, which is one of only three uh, new books to me that I'll be reading in December, and that will help me to have read the first 13, and then provided that book uh, 16, 15, no, Nope, 17. Provided book 17 comes out next year, I will only have four books left to be caught entirely up with this entire series. It is by far and away the longest uh, the, the longest series I've read, so the most amount of books I've read so far in a cozy mystery series. And overall, I love this series. Are there some problems in some books? Yes, admittedly so, but the majority of this series I absolutely love. The basic premise of the series as a whole is that we follow Hayley Powell, who writes a column for her paper, and her column is called the um, Food and Lifestyle or something, um, Food and Cocktail, I don't know, column series, where pieced and parcel throughout each and every single book, we uh, get to read this column, and the column will start with Hayley talking about an event that took place at one point in her life, and then she links that to two recipes, one being a cocktail recipe and one being a food recipe. I always loved the columns being dispersed uh, here and there throughout the book. I, I find that a fun way to break up the each and every book, and the majority of the books that I've read in this series have been absolutely top-notch, receiving either four, four point five or five stars from me. So let's talk about this one. So the premise of Blueberry T Death of a Blueberry Tart is Hayley Powell is now happily married. Before she can set a uh, sail on her honeymoon cruise, however, Hayley's mum, Sheila, pays an impromptu visit and promptly becomes the prime suspect in a murder. The victim is Sheila's old high school rival, Kasky Lemon Hogg, known for her homemade blueberry pies and her home-wrecking flirtations. As Hayley teams up with her BFF Liddy and Mona to clear her mother's name, Sheila reunites with Liddy's mum, Celeste and Mona's mum Jane for their own amateur sleuthing. The race is on between the mums and the daughters to find out who served this blueberry tart her just desserts. Okay, so let's get to my thoughts. Well, the premise gives it away anyway, so I might as well say it. In book 11, the prequel to this one, it ends with Hayley not being married, a ceremony started and someone we don't know who objected. It is revealed in chapter one of this book, so not a spoiler because it's chapter one, that someone, that that someone was Danny, Haley's ex. This made me so happy, so happy. Chapter one concludes with Danny and Haley leaving the church together in love. Yay! But then chapter two's beginning slams that idea as nothing more than that, an idea. In reality, she did marry Bruce, her co-worker. I was upset that they were getting married at the end of book 11 because it seemed like a shotgun out of the blue wedding. Haley deserved more than that. Then to see in book 12 that it actually happened and we didn't even get to see them exchange vows annoyed me. Then her mother comes to stay, which she never has in the, any of the past 11 books. So this seemed very out of the blue also. The mystery didn't intrigue me at all, really, but the reveal seemed very elevated compared to normal. I gave the book four stars, and most of the four stars are owing to the cozy side. I still love Haley's column, and I love her friends, and that ending, that ending was worth two stars on its own. A hesitant four-star rating, and I hope that the next one is a five-star book again. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say about that one. Chapter one was like a dream for me. Chapter two shattered the purpose of chapter one, which annoyed me. I I could, if I were going back in the day when I uh, did spoiler-free and spoiler reviews of, of books individually, I would have talked a lot about chapter one and chapter two of this book. I don't like fake outs when any author at any point in a book gives you a chapter and then chapter the ne following chapter negates the entire purpose of that chapter. It really annoys me. Um, plus, as I was mentioning, at the end of book 11, Haley has gone to someone else's wedding. That wedding does not take place. So her boyfriend 
ends up saying to her, we have the church and we might as well just get married here anyway. And so they go to, but then someone objects. In this book, in chapter one, we find out it's the ex Danny, who I love, and Danny ends up running away with Claire, with Claire, with Haley, um, which was fantastic. And then we find out in chapter two, this was merely an idea. So what the heck was the point of the whole thing? Haley deserved a lot better, and the readers deserve a lot better than what we got in chapter one. So that really let me down. But ultimately, my disappointment fell with the book itself. I gave it four stars primarily because I love Hayley and her friends in the column, and the reveal, when I say the ending deserved two stars, I meant the reveal. The reveal was incredibly elevated compared to the other books in this series, and I loved that it was. But on the whole, I didn't enjoy the book, but it so it's a hesitant four stars, that's what I'm trying to say. We'll move on. So normally I only talk about three books in every reading vlog, but this week I ended up reading four, so let's put that one up on the screen too. The fourth and final book that I read this week was this book, The Jungle Book, which is uh, by Rudyard Kipling. This is a middle grade classic, and I gave this book three stars. Okay. How do I describe this? <laughs> okay, first of all, I read my Mina Lima edition, and I can I just give a massive shout out to Mina Lima. Their editions cost more, but they are worth it. They are those they have those cloth bound covers, and they have interactive elements uh, within the book, and they are also beautifully illustrated uh, throughout the the book as well. And the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot highly recommend Mina Lima enough in my experience. I don't have a ton of special editions of books. In fact, I think the only special editions I have are the Mina Lima editions. Uh, and I have the Penguin Classic cloth bound version of The Count of Monte Cristo, um, because I just love that edition of it. But um, yeah, I highly recommend them. They are more expensive, but they are worth it. So uh, to the Jungle Book, I guess I'll start the premise off by saying I've seen the Jungle Book film, the Disney animated classic, many, 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 many times. I grew up watching it. I loved it. The idea of having this human who is raised in the jungle and is around all these you know, jungle animals. I just, I think it's a beautiful movie. I've also listened to very condensed versions of the Jungle Book, and I loved them as well. So I was very excited to get into the original canonical work that was Rudyard Kipling's work, his own works of it, the original, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, here's my issue. The Jungle Book has, I think, seven or eight chapters in it, but they're obviously very long chapters, but seven or eight chapters. Three of them are the Jungle Book story we all know and love, and without giving away spoilers, I mean the story that involves Mowgli is the first three chapters. The rest are something completely different. All of the characters that we know and love from Disney's animated version of The Jungle Book are not in the rest of the book. So suddenly we get to the ending of Mowgli's time in the jungle and we move on to completely different things. In the very next chapter, for example, we follow this seal who is wanting to find a safer place for his seal buddies, and by the end of that chapter, he does. And each chapter that follows the seal chapter is again like a one-chapter short story, where in uh, one we follow a guy who is on an elephant, in another one we are following this uh, mongoose named Ricky Tiki Tavi, and in another one, we follow these servants of a castle. And honestly, a lot of people on Goodreads, because I looked at the reviews after I had done my own. I like looking at reviews, but I want to write mine first so that I have my own individual thoughts and then check out what everyone else has said. A lot of people say that these other stories that came about after the well-known Mowgli story were such an amazing surprise to them. To me, it was the opposite. It was such a major disappointment to me. I wish that it was just Mowgli's story that I got. And the fact that it wasn't, and the fact that this book is literally called The Jungle Book, doesn't make any sense to me, given that only the first three chapters are Mowgli's story. I wish that this book was titled The Jungle Book and Other Stories, because I would have been a lot more forgiving. 
So I read another Minna Lima book, which is called The Little Mermaid and Other Stories by Hans Christian Andersen. And so you're more forgiving because you know not only are you getting The Little Mermaid, you're also getting other stories. In this one, it's just called The Jungle Book, not The Jungle Book and Other Stories. So that let me down. And ultimately, I gave the book three stars, all of those three stars going to the first three chapters. I loved reading the canonical work of the actual Jungle Book that I know, and I thought that was fantastic. Despite the fact that the thy thou and thou does make an appearance, and I'm not a fan of the thy thou thou language, <laughs> I still loved the book, the original canonical work of Mowgli's Jungle Book experience. But the rest of it did let me down, so I gave it three stars. All right, so let's quickly look ahead at what I plan to read between now and the end of the month. So the very next book I'm picking up, I'll be starting today, is this book, Bored to Death by C.J. Connor. This is the first book in the board game mystery series, and it is a male-male cozy mystery. So I'm looking forward to my second ever male-male cozy, and I love board games, so can't wait to begin. Then I'm going to be reading this book, Forest Fishings and Forgery by Tonya Kappas. This is book number three in the Campers and Criminals series. Following that, I'm going to read book four, which is Christmas uh, Criminals and Capers uh, by Tonya Campus. Book four in the Camper, Campers and Cozy, Campers and Criminals Cozy Mystery Series. Can't believe I'm struggling to say that. Then I'm going to pick up uh, 2389 by Ian Rob Wright, which is an adult horror. And then I'm going to end the month uh, with Stuart Little by E.B. White, which is a middle grade classic, and I'm looking forward to reading that as well. That will help me finish off the rest of November. And then in December, you'll see my December TBR coming up very soon. In December, I'm going to mainly do rereads, with the exception of three new books that I'm reading uh, for different reasons, but otherwise it's rereads. So there you go. That's the reading update. Now, with the last eight minutes we have, we're going to dive into everything else. So if you're just here for the reading, Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next year with more reading vlogs. But please stick around because there are a whole lot more videos to come, including favorites and non-favorites and bookshelf tour and goals and all those other videos coming up. But for those of you sticking around, we're going to jump into the, li the life update and then the TV update right now. Okay, life update time, and uh, I'm going to keep this quick, even though it is a little bit dramatic, um, but I'm going to try and keep it brief because I want time to discuss TV stuff as well. So, yeah, this has been a really interesting week for many and varying reasons, but one of them was because I was called into my company's uh, HR office to have a meeting with the leader of the HR side of things, as well as my team leader. They were a bit concerned. I've had some absences over the past 12 months months and they were just a bit concerned about my absences. I have, I've been very um, sick over the past 12 months. Not very sick as in um, that I'm always sick, but sick more than I usually am, uh, which was even surprising to me. So it was more of a just, um, you know, out of a caring side. They just wanted to check in with a duty of care to make sure that I was okay. And um, I've had a lot of personal things that have been going on behind the scenes with certain family members that I don't discuss on this channel, but I do believe that, that has contributed to me getting sick quite a bit in the past 12 months uh, because I'm always go, 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 whether I am at work um, during those eight hours dealing with all these customers uh, every day, every weekday, um, as well as doing my reading, as well as doing my channel, as well as dealing with a lot of different family uh, concerns that are going on. And what happens is because of this, I don't have a lot of time for myself. And so my body knows that the only way that I will stop is to shut down. And this uh, comes out and represents in some sort of a sickness or other, whether I'm getting migraines or nausea or whatever it is. And so that wipes me out and forces me to stop. And so I've had too many sick days for the company. And I'm just saying this in, in a neutral way. They have a number that you can't exceed. I exceeded it. So they called a meeting just to check in. It wasn't a, we're going to fire you. It was more of a, we just want to make sure you're okay um, because you've had a lot of, uh, of sick time. So are you all right? So uh, ultimately they allowed me the decision to uh, relegate my hours. I didn't know I had this as an option because when I first initially signed my contract, I was meant to be doing 40 hours a week. So uh, five eight-hour days, uh, 
every weekday and um, they gave me this option. So I went away and thought about it and ultimately came back and decided to take two days off every week for a month. So the way they're going to do it is I'm now going to work Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, take off Thursday and Friday just for mental health reasons and that's fine. It won't count as me being sick or anything like that. It'll be registered days off that I don't get paid for but that I'm given to do other things. So whether it is to be there for family with all that's going on with that side of things, um, I'll probably also spend some of that time reading as well, which is why I was able to read four books this week and other things as well. So that's kind of what's going on at the moment. I really appreciate that they are supportive of me. And uh, in a month's time, we're going to do a check-in to see how things are going, see if I want to change it or not. But I've been assured this does not affect my position at all, which I really appreciate because I thought that if I took any of those uh, days off that they were giving me, uh, that maybe it would affect my position in the company, but absolutely not. Their number one thing is making sure that they're, um, you know, making sure, uh, looking out for the health and well-being of their, uh, of their employees, which I really appreciate. So very a long story, very, very short. I am now working a reduced roster of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and taking Thursday and Friday every week off for four weeks, including this past week. And then we'll check in and see how things are going to go from there. But that will give me a lot more time to do uh, reading as well as I say, and, and whatever else I'm going to do. So there's that life update. All right, let's move on to watching. By the way, very quickly, just to wrap up that life update section, I am feeling good about this. When I found out that I was given these two extra days off, I my first thought was, this is fantastic. I am going to see how things go, and then when the month is up, I'll discuss it further with those I need to discuss it with. But uh, at the moment, uh, it happened this past week. I worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and had Thursday and Friday off. And uh, it seems to have made a massive difference for me. So I'm in a good place with it. Please know that moving forward. All right. Let's quickly talk about the sweet life of Zach and Cody. I have not updated this on uh, Discord, but I will. I have finished it. I finished The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, loved the the show, loved the series, and was definitely Team Cody all the way. I started the first five minutes of um, Life on Deck, or The Sweet Life on Deck, I think it was, um, the spin-off of Zack and Cody series. It was okay. I stopped watching it after a while. Okay. Uh, and so instead, uh, while I was listening to the audio book of The Distance Between Us, as I was saying, the narrator reminded me, oh, and so did the main character, both the narrator and the main character, reminded me a lot of Bay Kenish from Switched at Birth. And so because of that, I decided to do another binge of Switched at Birth. I am 26 episodes into the first season of Switched at Birth. It is a fantastic show. If I can motivate everyone to watch it, I will. It is, it has a deaf representation like I've never seen before. The basic setup for the series is that we follow two um, teenagers, Bay Kenish and Daphne Vasquez. Where they were both born on the same day at the same hospital and they were accidentally switched and their respective parents went home with a different child. At three years of age, Daphne ended up getting meningitis, which uh, made her fully deaf. And Bay, who was meant to go home with Daphne's so apparently mum, Regina, went home with a rich family, the Kenishes, who Bay's father, John Kenish, was a very well-known baseballer, so they're extremely rich. So, and um, Bay's actual birth mother, Regina Vasquez, it was quite poor, and she was slumming it in the slums. So they meet up in chapter, in chapter one, in episode one, everything is revealed, Daphne and Regina move into the guest house of the Kenishes, so everyone can get to know each other, and so not only is it about the switch, but a lot of deaf representation, which I absolutely love, and feel like everyone should watch. It's an amazing show, and I'm about four episodes away from being done with season one, I have season two ready to go, I can't wait to continue on with the series. And that's predominantly what I've been watching. I am aware that The Amazing Race Season 35 will end on the 14th of December, so therefore I'm just going to catch up on the 15th my time, which is the 14th in US time anyway. I'm going to just uh, binge episode 4 to episode 12 and just do it that way. But yeah, that's been basically my watching. I finished The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and I've been binging in the best possible way that switched at birth.
But that is it for this final weekly vlog for the for the year of 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, thoughts, and or questions, please let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget, favorites and non-favorites coming up. Letting you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Please be kind, love one another, and happy reading. Bye, everyone. <laughs>